an application. Sorry about that. No problem. Our uh, only item of new business is a review of an application from Cal Water to rebuild and upgrade an existing pump station located off Sioux Way. Uh, it doesn't have an address, but uh, I think we've all looked at the vicinity map and have a general idea of where it is. Um, and uh, Laura, who's making the staff presentation today? Um, it's supposed to be Suzanne Avila. She's having a little technical problem. So hold on just a second. Sorry about that. Just seems to be one of those afternoons. <laughs> yes. was taking the meeting from a different location. So I don't know if that um, was a problem. Sorry about that. The staff report was quite thorough. So if everybody's had a chance to look at that, I don't know that we actually need much of a presentation from staff. I can at least show you um, the graphics um, from the PowerPoint presentation because those might be helpful. So let me go ahead and share my screen and do that. Great. The applicant um, team is, of course, here also. So we might as well take a look at these that she prepared. So this is an architectural review um, application for a pump station rebuild. Um, Cal Water is the applicant. Um, they have several different projects that are um, coming in front of the ASCC over the next little bit um, as part of some uh, system upgrades that they're doing. So here's the scope um, of the proposed project. It's going to align with what you saw um, in your staff report. So there's a CMU block building um, that would be demolished. Removal of the existing booster pump, station piping, kind of the technical aspects of that and then removal and replacement of a six foot chain lick fence um, that has redwood slats. And then they're gonna install above ground discharge piping and below ground piping, um, two new booster pump pedestals, um, a lot of technical equipment that you can see outlined here so that they can bring their station up to the modern standards. So here's the aerial view um, of the site. Um, I think this one is helpful with the arrow there um, showing the location. You can see Cervantes wrapping around in Sioux Way. The parcel size is about 1.4 acres. Um, it's obviously in a residential zoning district surrounded by residential uses. This is the closer up vicinity map that shows the little um, leg that goes out to the Sioux Way location. Um, here is the site plan um, that I think the commissioners have seen, but this kind of shows the relationship to the equipment to the road and the um, perimeters of the site. This is a zoomed in area um, for the work. You know, most of this is, is pretty technical, you know, water pumping materials. So it's not of really high interest um, for the ASCC, but just wanted to give you an idea of where those detailed improvements are located on the site. Um, here's perhaps the more important part. These are the acoustical structures, the elevations of those structures. Um, these are kind of similar to the structures that were installed on Westridge um, with that water pump station improvement. So that's the way I've been thinking about it as being kind of similar to that project. And then um, there's electrical panel board um, to meet their electrical requirements. And then um, here's conservation committee recommendations. So removal of invasive plants, um, looking at fire mitigation and making sure there's a removal of fire ladder plants and thinking about um, opening breaks between the clusters. 
So those are great comments to think about. Um, and then think about the area from the construction process. Look out for large machinery, make sure it's not um, allowed in that open area of the site, even for access. So being really strict on the construction staging and access plan, and then really look out for erosion control on the property. Um, staff sent notice to all the neighbors within 300 feet, and the applicant sent neighbor notifications to the abutting property owners. Uh, we did not receive any additional comments this afternoon um, or by the noon deadline, so that we didn't forward anything on to the commissioners. So staff found that the project conforms to the zoning code and the design guidelines. Um, it's categorically exempt from CEQA because of its um, project scope, including the installation of small new equipment facilities and structures. So staff recommends approval of the architectural review permit subject to the recommended conditions of approval that were within the packet. And the um, Calwater team is here, quite a few folks. Um, so they're available to answer any questions and they may have a few brief remarks as well. So I would be happy to try to answer any questions um, and I'll turn it over to the applicant team as well. Sure. Uh, and here's his answer, here's so he's just in time to answer questions. Dave, you're muted. Thank you, Well, I needed a cough earlier. I thought you'd save you all from that. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? I don't. Do we have um, a sample color of the painted surfaces? We do not have a color. I did ask the uh, that one be submitted. Um, it is a it is a brown a dark brown color. Okay. And they may be able to describe it more in more detail, but it is a, it is intended to blend the equipment and structures into the site. Is that the color in the photographs provided? The photos are existing conditions, so um, not not the proposed structure. I think there's one that has a sort of brown paint. I was just curious if they're going to use the same paint, but we can ask them. Yeah, Cristobal, you might be able to answer that question. Yeah, so we uh, we most commonly use uh, kind of like a grouse tan or a terracotta brown. I know at other stations uh, within the Bear Gulch, in our Bear Gulch district, they've used, uh, they use both, both the grouse tan and the terracotta brown. Um, I guess we could, we could use either or, uh, whichever the, the town prefers. Any other questions for the staff presentation from commissioners? No questions from me. No. Thanks, so. Al. Okay. Uh, Cal Water representatives, do you have anything to add? This would be your uh, chance to make a presentation if you have. Well, one. I was just I was just thinking the infrastructure there. Um, I don't, I'm not too sure if it's like 40, 50 years old. It's just just a chance for us to upgrade all the infrastructure and make sure that you guys are provided, um, or not you guys, but the the residents is provided um, with um, with um, I would say it, uh, the efficient pressure um, and water and fire protection that that's that's needed. Just making sure that the infrastructure is upgraded to like uh, Laura was saying, up to uh, current standards, it's just that the station has just, has just been due. I don't, I'm not sure how long, but uh, we need to get in there and make sure everything is new. Yeah, and they did note on note a couple of the structures are failing that are there now. The CMU block building's failing and then the uh, structure that the electrical panel boards in as well. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Cal Water? No. No. Megan? No. I have one or two. Uh, have you had a chance 
to review the uh, conservation committee's comments. And do you have any difficulty with any of them? For example, uh, use of large machinery, a prohibition of the use of large machinery. Will that be challenging or difficult? And that's a question for Cal Water representatives. Go ahead, Lee, if you want to, and then I can go with or... I, 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 hi, Nate Torch, operations manager for Cal Water. I have not seen that per se. Um, I, I could follow up with Cristobal, but we, we're going to need to use heavy machinery to dig the trenches and install the pipe. Uh, we're talking about some heavy equipment. Um, even to lower pump shelters, we would need a, a what they call a boom truck to do so. My understanding of the comment is that there, the conservation committee was primarily concerned about the native area that's kind of uh, abutting part of the site. And um, I don't think the issue is bringing equipment in on the paved roadway into your site itself, but they wanted to be really careful to preserve that native area and not impact that in any way. So um, as long as you can get the equipment in through that panhandle uh, driveway, which I believe you can. Yeah. And into the site and contain it, I think that that's workable. It's uh, it's preserving the you know the area surrounding the site that that's really in kind of a native condition. Got you. Yes, we could definitely uh, we could definitely stick to that, and we could actually uh, store equipment and material off the site if need be, completely off the site if need be. I think that would be. Uh, a good thing to consider. Um, uh, we can address that maybe in the comments in a little bit. Um, whenever I can, whenever, whenever we do projects like this, uh, whenever we can, we'll use, we'll try to use the full width of our station for, uh, for uh, pipe, for any kind of equipment in our station because it's locked. Anything else, well, we could, we could, what they call road, we could road off and, and drive off. Uh, to our yard here in Atherton. Great, thank you for that. Uh, I think that covers it for me. Um, any other questions before we go on to public comment? Actually, I think how long this will take and, and when they imagine to begin work. Christopher, do you have a schedule from, from our general contractor yet? Right. I, I had a question. Um, does Cal Water have um, a native sort of conservation person that they use when they're doing sites to identify plants and weeds and invasives? Uh, we do. We do have an environmentalist on board who uh, helps determine what uh, protected species or um, uh, plants or anything of that nature, we do. Right, and are they called to every site or just? They, that's, uh, that's funny you should say that because I was just about to answer, they're not called to every site. Um, it's, it's certainly they're called to site where we're going outside of our current footprint, our layout of our property. And if, we're, if we are going to be going outside of that, uh, say like if we were to enlarge one of our properties, uh, um, and increase it by 10 feet, 15 feet, things of that nature that they would be called on. A lot of the work we're doing here is uh, digging a, a disturbed soil, if you will. We actually are removing and replacing pipe where there is pipe. So uh, the, the areas will, for the majority, Cristobal, correct me if I'm wrong, we're not digging in any native soil, if you will, and we're not increasing our footprint. Um, to the degree, like uh, if we were building a whole new station on a, a, a separate parcel. Correct me if I'm wrong, right, Crystal? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So if if we requested that this person be available to look at this site, even though you're not increasing the footprint, but we are concerned about the native areas and then the invasives, would that be possible? Um, certainly, certainly. 
Okay. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that for, for my team here. Um, we work with the towns. Uh, and if that makes you feel uh, better for your for the people that you represent, most certainly be happy to do so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Megan had asked about the schedule. Does uh, yeah, sorry any, about that. Uh, no problem. They, uh, you know, we were uh, looking to get uh, approval through the planning department. Uh, we still have to finalize the design on our end uh, to make uh, clean up the plans a bit, I would say. Um, and then we would submit to the building department for permits. We're anticipating, I'd say, closer to the end of the year, uh, um, and we're planning to go into construction outside of, uh, of the fire season, which would be, I believe it's past October. Um, duration for construction, we're expecting possibly anywhere from you know two to four months. I would say closer to the four month range. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? I see a lot of head shaking. All right. Thank you for the presentation, both staff and Calwater. I'll open the public comment portion of this agenda item. Laura, are there any members of the public here to comment on this? Uh, yes, we have Caroline Vertongen. Welcome, Caroline. Please go ahead. Madge, uh, sorry, I was late, so um, you might have covered it. But um, thank you very much, Megan, for, for asking this question. Um, I wanted to know which, which area that um, in, in Portula Valley that this water station, um, which, which residents is it serving? And I also wanted to know if, um, how we will be impacted when you do the work. And then my third question is, is this also the site where we're going to have the radio um, for the emergency radio? The, uh, I'm sorry, if this is the site where we're going to place the antenna for the radio. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Um, so, yeah, Dave, go ahead. Go, go. I was just going to ask Laura: uh, is, is the emergency radio antenna part of Cal Waters' work, or is that a town initiative? I'm not sure. I understand it to be a town initiative, but I'm not up to speed on it. Okay. It is a town initiative, and that's at a different location. It is in Portola Valley, and it's it's somewhat in close proximity mm -hmm. to this uh, station, but it's, uh, the, I believe the station they're doing it, uh, I see the emails, station 27, which is off of Golden Hills. Golden Oak and Peak Lane. There you go. So okay. it's in close proximity to the station. Okay. At the top, top of what, the hill. What was the other question? Uh, the service area and how residents might be impacted by the project. Um, the service area is, is for the, the people around Sioux Lane and Cervantes in the immediate area. Um, they shouldn't be impacted. Uh, what we're planning on doing is, Cristobal, you can correct me anytime I'm wrong here, but it's a two-fold project. Um, we're going to be installing some pipeline that we could take water from a, a different zone and pump around this station in the meantime. So the residents shouldn't see any maybe at one day of water uh, interruption when we do that tie-in. But other than that, we're looking to bypass this station um, and using a higher elevation service, um, a part of our district to bypass this station. So really the, in the, the only residents that would really see that are the, the residents that are in the immediate area of Sioux. 2040, something like that, 2040, and I think one other resident in, on Sueway would be impacted. And that's that's a, like a normal tie-in that we would do, transferring a service. Great. Thank you, Nate. Uh, Laura, are there any other members of the public here? Uh, there are no other hands up from the public. We have three members of the public right now. All right. OK, I'll close the public hearing on this item and move along to commissioner discussion. And uh, Al, would you mind kicking us off? Sure, Dave. Um, I mean, this proposal seems to me to be very well thought out. 
Um, you know, I think that uh, the uh, enclosures seem appropriate. They're not very high. Uh, you know, the fact that the sound levels have been managed is good. Um, it's, it's basically just a, um, you know, it's got a modest modification to the fence, but I just don't see any issues with it. It seems to me that it's consistent with the general plan, uh, minimum disruption to the site, uh, and it's important that we have good water service to the, the, the residents. So uh, the SAF analysis of the findings is fine. It looks to me like it conforms to design guidelines. So uh, I'm, I'm completely in favor of the project. Thanks, Al. Megan. Yeah, I'm in agreement with Al. This seems to fit right in um, with all of our checklists and it's an important upgrade that needs to be made um, considering you know, water is so precious and uh, we certainly need good pressure in case of wildfire uh, needs. And um, I think that this paint color will fit into our reflectivity rating. So I can support that. And the acoustic structures look good. So yeah, I, I think this is, this is a straightforward project. Too bad it has such a long timeline, but of course that's what it needs. Great, thank you. Jane. Right. Yep, I'm in, in agreement with Alan Megan. Um, I think it's a good project that should go ahead. Uh, the only thing I would possibly add is uh, read the conservation's comments about adding somebody from Cal Water to check and observe the property, re the areas outside of the building pad. Um, so that we can you know make sure that there isn't a fire ladder or anything you know any invasives getting in so aside from that i think it's a good good project and thank you for updating thank you jane i don't have anything to add i would uh kenny's here as well oh kenny you've joined us great uh i kenny uh let me just ask you if you've had a chance to listen to the presentation or if you'd like to um, uh, abstain from the vote on this one. And you're muted, by the way. There you go. Uh, I'll, I'll, um, I agree with your advice to, um, earlier to um, when I mentioned that I wasn't going to be able to make the beginning of the meeting um, to abstain from the vote. Um, OK. Since I had to miss part of the meeting. But thank you for the opportunity. No, you're welcome. All right. Um, I would uh, like to uh, include the Conservation Committee's recommendations as a condition with a slight modification. And that is that rather than exclude the use of heavy machinery in the project to minimize the impact of that machinery on the surrounding area, um, and to go ahead and wherever possible store equipment offsite instead of uh, on the, um, uh, the, the native area around the project. Um, and Jane and I agree, it would be great to have the conservation person come in and take a look at, especially the issue of invasives. Uh, if that is a, a seeding area for uh, ditrichia, which I think they noted they found there, it would be good to get rid of it at this time. Um, so I'm uh, wholly in favor of the project and ready to entertain a motion. Right, um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the plans as drawn uh, within our agenda for today uh, with the addition of the comments uh, by Chair Dave Ross to be added in as spoken. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? And Kenny, you're going to abstain? Yes. Okay. That passes 401 and uh, Good luck and uh, 
Thank you for taking care of our water needs in town. Appreciate it very much. You're very welcome. And um, I'll be one of the guys representing the district. I, I work in the district. So if you guys ever need anything, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, give us a give us a call. Thank Great. you. And Dave, that's Lee Blevins. Lee, Lee yes. Blevins. Lee. Thank call you. him as much as you want. Oh, all the time, yeah. <laughs> Put him on my speed dial. There you go. <laughs> Thank Great. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay, that concludes item one and our only item of new business today. Um, then on to the uh, commission staff committee reports and recommendations. Uh, we have before us our annual election of officers. Hi, right, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. You can stick around if you like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, annual election of officers. And uh, it has been uh, traditional, but not always uh, the case that the uh, chair steps aside, the vice chair steps up to chair, but it's um, the wild west out here and anything can happen. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Jane may have some thoughts about what she contemplates her role. And uh, so to kick this item off, uh, maybe we should just have a, um, you know, a bit of a roundtable discussion about uh, where people are and their commitments and their desires about serving. And Jane, if you'd like to start, that would be great. All right. Um, well, essentially, um, I've had a few life things happening, and we are not sure. I am not. I am not sure how much I'm going to be in this country this year. So I feel it wouldn't be fair for me to take on the role of chair if I'm going to be absent for um, a number of the meetings. Um, I have mentioned this to Dave and Laura, um, but um, and obviously I want to carry on serving on the commission, but to, if I'm abroad, I'm not sure how much of the information I'm going to be able to get from the computer, et cetera. Uh, so that's my current situation as regards being chair this year. Thanks for sharing that, Jane. Um, how are other people doing with their own uh, commitments and uh, interest in serving as an officer this year? Now, this year would be till February 23. Is that correct? Okay. Um, the only conflict I might have, and this is a maybe, and this is really exciting actually, is that my uh, youngest daughter, who will be a junior next year, has possibly an opportunity of an incredible internship down in San Diego. And we would be moving down there from January to through the school year till June. Now we don't know if, we're, we're, if she's in or not, but I clearly couldn't, sh couldn't participate in ASCC at that point. I couldn't go to any site meetings. And even if it's Zoom, it's probably not a good thing, but I will be here through December. So I just want to put that out there. And then we'll be coming back for the next school year. So that's, Thanks. that's there. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else like to uh, talk about their availability and interest? Uh, I, I don't have any particular uh, restrictions, uh, although the, the housing element committee keeps me <laughs> somewhat busy also, but uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any, any particular restrictions. Uh -huh. Okay. And Kenny, how's your schedule these days? Are you uh, available for, at, and I'll just uh, since you haven't experienced a vice chair or a chair positions, I'll tell you that it's not a lot of extra work above and beyond normal commissioner, at least in my experience. There are uh, perhaps a few more discussions and reviews, um, but it's not something that I would expect would add uh, many hours a month, for example. Um, but I know that you're a little busy with child rearing as well right now. Um, 
that that one that part of um that part of things was entirely expected um so um uh i i won't claim that to be a uh, uh although i can't say that i i fully understood what i was in for going into it but i don't know how <laughs> um, nobody ever does <laughs> um uh but um i i should mention um uh my wife's brother um in the uk um he was diagnosed with with stage four cancer so um uh we're looking at spending some time back there um we don't know we don't we still don't have a lot of information about um that would lead us to understand exactly how much time that we're going to be spending there in the next year um and that combined with i don't think it will be it's not going to be five or six months um uh but um i'm not in a position to guarantee that i'll be around for for nearly all of the meetings um nothing of that and um uh and um we're we're trying sort of we're, we're sort of desperate to get some work done on on our place here um and we're finding ourselves in a situation where um, we may need to move locally and we can find uh, we may not be in Portola Valley um, uh, until we can get that work done here. So uh, I have a hard time committing to a position that would, if I understand correctly, has an expectation of, of being around for almost all the meetings. Um, given those things. Uh, ordinarily, I, I can promise that I will at some point <laughs> um, within my term, um, presuming that things, things sort themselves out. Um, uh, yeah, it's difficult. We have a lot of balls in the air that we didn't expect um, to have in the air or still have in the air. Um, so I'm, I'm hesitant. So I, I guess I would want to understand more what the expectations in terms of attendance really um, in taking that on are because I don't want to, I wouldn't want to disappoint that. Well, thanks Kenny. Uh, for my part, um, <clears throat> I, uh, I plan to be around all year. Um, and if, um, if it works out best for the commission, I'm happy to serve in uh, either position if, um, you know, if, uh, again, if that works out best. Uh, there was a period uh, a few years ago when I served some consecutive terms as chair I think that was a little unusual. It worked out okay. Uh, I didn't mind it. I hope the it, it worked all right for the for the town. Uh, I'm willing to do that again. I'm willing to uh, step back and just be a commissioner. I'm willing to be vice chair if that uh, fits into the overall plan. So um, that's kind of my situation at the moment. Um, so. Uh, I suppose at some point in this item, we should find a place for public commentary. Uh, since we're doing that now for every agenda item, I see Laura nodding. So um, before we go to a nomination process, why don't uh, I open public comment and invite anybody from the public who would like to address us on this agenda item to speak now. And I do not see any hands up. Right. This is a pretty boring topic and probably <laughs> no one is very much interested <laughs> except us. <laughs> All right. Well, I okay. Think, well, how about if uh, I uh, nominate sure, Dave jump in. to be a chair again? <laughs> I'd second that. 
<laughs> I would I would second that. I think you're an incredible chair. Yeah, so do I. So do I. <laughs> Gee. Uh, you guys you think flattery is, flattery is going to work here? <laughs> it might. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, well, as I said, I'm happy to do it. Um, and uh, I, I love working with you all. It's, uh, it, you make it an easy job. And uh, so uh, if, it were, if it were hard, I wouldn't volunteer. But uh, with, uh, with the support from all of you folks and the great staff behind us, it, it works out fairly well. Um, so uh, I'll accept that nomination. Um, we'll take a vote. But in the meantime, uh, who would like to be vice chair? Um, I, you know, you've all done great at vice chair. Uh, it, uh, vice chairs aren't called upon very often to step in. Um, but of course, they have to be ready to do it on a moment's notice. And it looked like Megan was making a little gesture there. Was that, a, were you stepping up there, Megan? And Megan, I think you're muted. I, I would absolutely step up to be vice chair. Um, just in the caveat that it come January, <laughs> I may not be around sure. for a good six months. Well, we've got a couple of other qualified people. Yeah. Uh, if that should if that should happen. Right. Okay. So, um, are there any other? nominations people would like to make any competing nominations uh, if not looks like we have a slate and we could take a vote well we, we need just, to second just for the record for yeah, Megan's, I have, uh, I, i'll second right. megan's yeah and 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 we'll just check with laura chair. on process here all right thank you all yes yeah, so we've got a motion um Chair Ross in a second for um, Commissioner Sill to nominate uh, Megan as the vice chair. Right, yeah. And then we can take one vote on both. Um, all right. All those in favor of this slate? Aye. 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 Okay. That sounds unanimous. No dissenters. Okay, well, uh, onwards. <laughs> Item three, commission reports. Uh, Al, I'm guessing this is you or maybe Laura's- It is me, I think. It is you. I'm sure Laura could do it uh, better, but uh, I, think it, I think it falls under me and Laura can just correct me if I screw anything up. Um, so since the last time we've met, there have been two uh, ad hoc housing element committee meetings. Um, one was on January 18th and it had a, uh, a heavy focus on fire safety and was absolutely fascinating. Um, Laura gathered up a bunch of experts in the area. We got to hear from Susan Hartman, who is the uh, community development director for Paradise. So she has a lot of experience with fire issues. Um, and we had a, another guy who talked, Zeke Lunder, who uh, is really his specialty is advanced fire risk mapping. And that's important as we look at where additional housing could be in Portola Valley, we need to make sure it's in areas with low fire risk. And then also Don Bullard talked to us for quite a while. So, so that meeting was uh, really, really great. And, uh, you know, I encourage you to go back and, and read the minutes or watch the video if you if you are interested, because there, there was a lot covered in that meeting. Um, we also met on uh, January 31st. Um, and uh, that meeting, I, I missed much of the meeting because I had a conflict. But the uh, the topics that day were um, a, a summary of the ad hoc committee of committees meeting, and their their take on uh, the housing element activity. And then we also heard presentations on affiliated housing and on SB9. Um, and so I think that was also a very meaty meeting. Um, then uh, other things are, there's a housing survey that is 
active right now and i would encourage you um, all to take it and uh, encourage your friends to take it uh, i believe that there's been over 300 responses already and it's only been active for uh, a few days so uh, there is um, a reasonable amount of interest in town and uh, um, you know anything we can do to get people who haven't taken the survey to take it is great and uh, then the, the big thing on the horizon for the housing element group is the, uh, the housing sites inventory, which is basically looking throughout the town and identifying areas where we potentially could have higher density housing than is currently zoned for as a uh, way to meet um, the, or as a component of meeting the, uh, the arena number that we've got. Um, and there's multiple things that will go into that, but part of it is, is rezoning, part of it is, uh, you know, figuring out how many ADUs we expect to get and things like that. But so there's, there's a lot going on with the housing uh, committee and it, it is quite interesting and, and Laura is doing a great job. It's really, really good. Thank you all. Um, Laura, anything you want to add to that? Um, I, that was an excellent summary. Thank you, Al. Um, I would only add that this is kind of the perhaps the most critical time um, for participation in the housing element process, which seems strange since it's going to go on for the whole year. Um, but this is where the housing element committee is really considering some of the most important policy discussions. So this is a really good time to engage um, as members of the public. Tell your friends and neighbors that if they're interested in this, this is really a great time to participate um, because some of the later steps, they may feel like some of the decisions have already been made, right? So this is a great time to plug in. Great. Thank you, Al and Laura for that uh, thorough summary. It's, uh, it's a heroic effort that you all are putting in on that committee. Uh, let's see, we probably have some other Commission reports. Uh, I know Jane and I have one. Uh, is there anybody else that has uh, engaged in commissioner activity in the last four weeks? Not me. Megan, nothing. Megan, you're on mute. My goodness. Um, I had just have one real, real simple one. This is Firethorn, 40 Firethorn, you know, up above the club there in Los Trancos. And it is actually changing the stucco color to a darker shade, and it's um, it's a great choice. So approved. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Jane, would you like to summarize our um, meeting on Monday? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we had a meeting with um, the fire department. Um, and uh, two members of the ASCC, Dave and myself, and obviously the town, um, because we were discussing the landscaping plans, uh, which had come back, which came back to the town because um, they got to a point with um, the planning that they needed our input. Um, so essentially we all discussed the plantings and the fences, and um, we cut three redwoods out of the plans. We cut um, ficus that were going to grow along the fence, but on the other side from the neighbor, so they wouldn't be seen, but they would have taken a lot of water and then they wouldn't have grown type thing. Um, so, which was, which the, they worked out while we were on, on the call that would save something like 42,000 gallons of water per annum, which was a significant reduction. So um, we all, after the discussion, we all agreed that the plans, that, that they were going to redo the plans and send them through to us, uh, which they did the following day. And we all agreed that the approvals, the, the changes reflected our comments and we approved of them. So um, obviously we might have a bit of pushback from the neighbors on this, but the way we thought about it was that we always think less is more when doing landscapes. 
And if these were separate applications, we would say no to those ficus, we would say no to those redwoods. So that's why we, we came down with that decision the way we did. Um, I don't know whether, Dave, you have anything else to add? Uh, just a little bit. I would just add that I think that the applicants team uh, did a really uh, thorough and diligent job of meeting with the affected neighbors, listening to their input, um, really going um, beyond what most applicants would do in terms of uh, listening to their concerns and uh, trying to work out solutions for screening <coughs> mitigation. Um, <clears throat> there were a few things that Jane and I observed um, sometimes uh, it, I think it's best to view these things a little bit fresh. You know, we sort of brought a fresh look to these and the uh, redwood trees that were being added to the existing grove uh, appeared to us to be uh, really um, a, a very short-term solution for some kind of mid-story screening. In other words, once those redwoods grow up a little bit, they won't provide any more screening than the existing redwoods do. Uh, because the uh, lower branches disappear and you can see right through them. Uh, there's a very dense grove of mid-level screening that was going to be planted, so dense that uh, we believed they were not going to thrive. Uh, not enough sunlight, uh, not enough space to grow. So we asked for those to be reduced somewhat. They were on the final plan. And then as Jane said, the ficus plants that were planted on the fire station side of a new solid redwood fence were going to be, um, uh, actually we didn't see how they would contribute to screening in any way, but we're going to consume quite a bit of water. Uh, so we asked for those to be eliminated. Those changes were made. We approved the plan as Jane said on the next day. And uh, I believe that closes that item. Um, as I understand it, and Laura can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, ours was the final step in the approval process for them to be able to go to the building department and get a permit. Um, I don't think there is any additional planning commission review for it. Am I That's right about correct. that, Laura? Yeah, the way that the condition was crafted, the um, authority rested with the ASCC, two ASCC members to approve that. Um, we still do have to go through the step of developing a landscape maintenance agreement, right. um, but the ASCC doesn't have to have a role in that. That's between the staff, the applicant, and the town attorney, and that's to meet the um, back fence neighbor's interest to make sure that those plants are maintained um, since that neighbor does have a view of them. Mm -hmm. And so um, staff will be working on that with the town attorney. Great. Thank you. And will that discussion involve... Uh, uh, that back fence neighbor, or is that uh, just to be worked out between the town and the applicant? Um, it'll probably be just the town and the applicant. Um, I'm pretty familiar with that neighbor's um, interests um, as I've had numerous conversations with her. If there's any, and these things are pretty routine. We ha don't have a lot of them in town, but other communities I've worked for, they're pretty common. So it's kind of a form um, type of maintenance agreement. So if there's any issues that come up, I'll be in touch with the neighbor. Okay, great. Um, I'll hold off. Well, first I'll ask if there's any other commissioner reports. And I don't think there are. So I'll go ahead and um, open the public hearing on this agenda item and invite anybody from the public who's here to address us on Commission reports to do so now. Uh, we have two hands up. Some more members of the public have joined the meeting as we've been going on. So now we have Rita Comas. Very good. Rita, welcome. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, I attended the housing element meeting and the, uh, I guess, committees of committees meeting. And there was a suggestion that there was going to be a community meeting sometime in March. Has that date been confirmed uh, yet on when the, you know, the community would be able to participate and, and give their opinions? 
Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Uh, Laura, do you have that on your radar? Uh, we have a tentative date, but we haven't quite confirmed it yet. So it'll be something we'll be announcing, I would say, over the next several days. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, any... Next, we have Caroline Vertongen. Welcome, Caroline. Go ahead. Again. Go ahead. Um, Yes, uh, we also attended the ad hoc housing um, element committee um, meetings and then also that committee of committees and we have addressed some issues because we seem to have a different um, perceptive perception of, of what was discussed during those meetings. So um, we also were a little confused with uh, Zake Lunder because again, he's a new consultant. Um, and then there was another presentation after that. And I advise you guys to actually see that presentation. This was actually from Mr. Moritz, the same gentleman who spent all these years um, putting this map together that we always have been referring to. This is since 2009, and this is in our general plan. And we don't understand why staff and town council has not um, actually used his advice or actually used that map to identi identify you know, the high fire uh, zoning risks. We don't understand why we're going with a new consultant who seems to have only limited information. And so that's why I think Rita, Rita's comment is, when can we participate? Because as you know, we have some staff that is fairly new in, to our town and we have um, new planners that are also new and, and, and there is no consistency um, on the information. And we feel like there's information missing. Uh, so, I don't know if you got my email over the weekend. I apologize that it was over the weekend, but yeah, I included a map. And again, this is a map from 2007, but what is so fascinating about that map, it, it shows the zoning. It also shows you every time the town council has done an amendment to change the zoning. And I, don't, I was hoping that somebody would give me an answer um, from, from uh, the planning department there must be a new new map you know 2007 this is a long i'm sorry a long time ago so is there a map and why we're we not using that one either so thank you for my uh, for allowing to give you some comments thank you thank you caroline uh this is a uh, uh a complex subject and i don't think we're probably equipped to do a discussion or uh, much in the way of answers here. We're, we're here to listen to your concern and, uh, and hear it. Um, but it does sound to me like this will be um, a fruitful discussion to have at the upcoming public meeting on the, um, of the committees and the fire risk work. Um, and just through the chair, yeah. um, yes, I Laura. did reply to the email um, from Caroline over the weekend. Um, and she's referring to the zoning map that's online that is the current zoning map. Um, the zoning map has the dates that they've that it's been amended, um, but the council adopts other ordinances that are related to the zoning code that don't change the map. So the map doesn't include those ordinances, it only includes the ordinances that change the physical map itself. So that's what I um, sent over to Caroline via email. Great. Well, th thank you for that information. Um... All right, are there any other members of the public to address us regarding commission reports? Uh, there's no other hands up. Great, thank you, Laura. All right, I'll close commission reports and move on to staff report. And we have an update on the safety element from Laura. Um, I wanted to make sure that ASCC has an idea of what's going on with this because it's very important. Um, and you might have friends and neighbors that are talking about it. So this is just a very brief update for you. Um, back in August of 2021, the town council had an item where they considered an outline of the safety element update process. 
and it selected a consultant. Um, as you know, state law requires us to update our housing element and our safety element on the same cycle every eight years now. So that's what we're doing. So we started working on some of the preliminary aspects of that late in 2021. We are following um, very strongly the guidance that comes from OPR, which is the State Office of Planning and Research. Um, so that's the state guidelines of what we need to include in our safety element. We are also following the OPR guidance around fire safety. They have a document called the Fire Hazard Planning Technical Advisory, and that includes best practices and policies. It's actually in the final version of an update right now. So it's kind of like in final draft form. So it's pretty fresh um, information from OPR. And important to note also that um, the update to our safety element requires review by both Cal Fire and Woodside Fire district. So uh, staff is involving them in the steps of the fire district um, and all of the work that we're doing. And they also have a formal review um, aspect that they have to have of the safety element. In terms of the outreach plan, um, there'll be a community-wide meeting on the safety element that will likely be in April, um, but we don't have an exact timeline for that. There is also going to be direct involvement by the town's existing committees because they have a lot of expertise in these areas already. So that will include um, Wildfire Prep Committee, Emergency Preparedness Committee, and the Geologic Safety Committee. So all those committees will have an opportunity to review draft materials and analysis um, that will be eventually combined together into a draft document. Um, then the Planning Commission will review the draft safety element and the Town Council will review it. We anticipate it being completed at the end of this calendar year um, or thereabouts. And the exact timing of how the safety element and the housing element go together and their CEQA review, um, we're still working out the details because the state continues to throw more monkey wrenches um, into everything and, and has changed the schedule on us. So we're working through some of those details with the schedule. Um, uh, one thing that I wanted to note is if members of the public or you or your neighbors are interested in, in following that um, process for the safety element, the best way to do that is to sign up for an e-notify. So there'll be a brand new e-notify for the safety element over the next couple of days. So on the town website where we can sign up for getting those automatic notifications, um, that's the place to sign up. And then the next public discussion on this will be a town council update on February 23rd, where we're just gonna give the council and the community a little bit of an update on where we're at, what work has been completed so far, how we imagine some of that community outreach working and some of the next steps. So that's a very brief summary, um, but I didn't want anyone to feel like it's happening and you didn't know about it. So if there's any other questions, I'd be happy to take them. And my plan is just to give brief updates like this um, to the ASCC as we go forward with that process. So if you'd like to see something other than that, um, let me know. And I'd happy to take any questions or comments. Thanks, Laura. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Laura? I do. Nope. All right, Laura is uh, the idea that this would be adopted in 2023 is that the sort of designated year for the eight year cycle? Um, it might be adopted at the very end of this year, 2022, or the mm -hmm. very beginning of 2023. And it'll depend on the timing of the housing element and mm -hmm. the CEQA document um, for both items. So the exact timing we're not sure of, but the very end of this year, very beginning of next year. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Public comment. I'll open public comment on staff reports. Any members of the public like to address us, uh, give their input on this agenda item? First, we have Caroline Vertongen. Go ahead, Caroline. Thank you very much. Um, this question is actually for Laura. In regards to the safety, I'm wondering why the bicycle pedestrian Traffic Safety Committee is not involved. Thank you, Caroline. And just a reminder, folks, this generally the public comment section is not so much designed for questions as it is for input. We're here to listen to you. But 
Uh, if Laura has a ready answer for that, I'd invite her to go ahead and provide it. The safety element is going to cover the specific topics that are in the law um, and in the guidance. And they're more related to um, like the physical environmental environment and the intersection between human activity. So it's fire, flooding, geologic conditions, it's those types of things. So there isn't really a focus on things like um, transportation safety um, in the safety element. Great. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. Any other members of the public to comment on this item? Uh, we have Rita Comez. Rita, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my, I guess it's not a question, it's a comment. Uh, but for the safety element, you know, everyone's talking about fire and, and you just mentioned a few other things, but for the geo safety committee in our town, they have not met in several years. And, you know, we've been talking about the safety element for some time, but it doesn't seem like this group has been part of it, you know, the, the safety element, they were not part of the committee of committees, uh, they were not part of the housing element. And I think before we can rezone and, you know, my personal opinion, but before we can rezone and we can do some other things that we have to, San Andreas Fault is part of the description of Portola Valley and we have to uh, look at this and the, you know, the geosafety committee are um, geologists, you know, they're not just um, Joe Public. We have some brilliant people in this town and I, I'm glad that they're on that committee, but uh, I would like to hear their views on and, and, their, and see their input on this particular thing uh, along with uh, fire moving forward and have that safety element in place before we then move forward with a lot of the stuff with the housing element. Thank you. Rita, thank you for that suggestion. Can I, through the chair, can I speak to that yes, briefly? Yes, please do. Um, we did in the Geologic Safety Committee, to my knowledge, hasn't met since 2017. Um, they can meet at any time that they wish. Um, they would need to initiate that meeting. The only time the town initiates a meeting of the Geologic Safety Committee is if we need them to provide a recommendation on something specific, such as um, modifications to the geologic map that are outside of the Planning Commission's purview. So that's the last time they were convened. So they can convene themselves and meet through the town clerk's normal process. Um, staff did reach out to the secretary of the Geologic Safety Committee several times to see if they wish to participate in the Committee of Committees. Um, and they didn't elect to. When it comes to the safety element, staff will be contacting them directly to initiate a meeting um, to participate in the safety element process. Great, thank you for that additional information, Laura. Any other members of the public to comment on this? Uh, Sarah Warnikoff um, has her hand up. All right, Sarah, as a member of the public, uh, <laughs> perhaps even as a council member, please proceed. Whoops, sorry. I just wanted to add because this because uh, I was copied on the email that we have sent. Uh, Jeremy did reach out to all of the members of the Geologic Safety um, Committee about I, I don't know I won't know exactly, but about a week or so ago to inform them of their role as part of the safety element. And so we just haven't heard back from anybody. So I just wanted to add that. Great. Thank you, Sarah. All right, anybody else? Uh, there are no other hands up. All right, thank you. I'll close staff reports. Uh, all we have left is approval of minutes and they've been piling up. <laughs> we have, <laughs> we have uh, two meetings uh, for approval of minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review those minutes and do they, anybody have any corrections? They look fine to me. They look fine to me, but I wasn't here for the meeting in January because I had COVID. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> fine with me as well. All right. Uh, we'll take the votes on approval of these separately uh, since uh, Jane was not present for January 10th. So on item five, the meeting minutes of October 11th, 2021, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion uh, to approve. I'll second that. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Very good. That passes unanimously. And for the ASCC meeting of January 10th, approval of the minutes. This is January 10th, 2022, just to be clear. Uh, a motion. Uh, I move that we approve them as written. Very good. Is there a second? Great. Second. Thanks, Megan. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, one, abstention. one abstention. Thank you, Jane. Okay, that takes care of the minutes. We're caught up on that. And uh, really, all we have left is adjournment. Uh, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting and uh, wish everybody a good remainder of the month. And um, let's see, uh, do we have Laura uh, prospects for a meeting on the 28th? Um, no, we do not anticipate having an ASC meeting on the 28th. Um, so we anticipate that your next regularly scheduled meeting would be all the way to March 14th. Okay. Do we have any properties coming up? Laura, because it seems to be quite quiet for us at the moment. Yeah, the applications tend to group together. So you just approved a whole bunch and then we are just taking in a whole bunch of applications right now. So we might have just a little quiet stretch and then we'll have a busy stretch again. Okay, thank you. We'll enjoy both in their times. Exactly, yes. All right. <laughs> all right, well, thank you everybody. And thank you all the members of the public who joined us today. And I look forward to seeing everybody in a month. Okay. Thanks, thanks everyone. Good night. Take care. Happy Valentine's Day. Yay. Yes. Yeah. Thank Valentine's you. Day. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.